Now, the final video in this series is going to take us back to Kurunuga Alta. Uh, Manjalila mentions that this is the section where you can do a couple uh, less elegant plays, which is an interesting thing to say because we have some rather straightforward actions and then a few things that are quite, quite complex. Um, so we'll look at all of them. Uh, in brief, a lot of these are actually what we were doing or what we were dealing with as the patient. So now we're seeing it from the agent's point of view, what we could do from this position if we want to be the aggressor. Uh, so first up, we have a basic uh, list of things we can do. So if I start with the thrust, I can feint the reverso and then throw a mandrito to the leg. So very, very similar to what we do in the crossings of the middle of the sword in Babadokia. So we're going to look up. We're going to thrust to the face. We're going to give the look of a reverso. But throw away Mandrich to the leg instead. So very similar to this over here. Except we are going low with that cut not high. We could also faint a mandrito to the head and throw a reverso to the leg. This is very similar to this idea from Iron Gate where we are coming up here and striking to the leg with that number six. So same start, once you pass forward, give a look at a mandrito, throw the reverso, and get out of there. So we have stepped forward with the right foot. I'm gonna give the look, and our right foot is free, which is the foot that uses time. Strike, get out, and continue moving. Third option is we can just come in, do a thrust, and throw my drift to the leg. So kind of the first, so kind of the, yeah, the first play, just minus the feint. And if you've ever done any 133, this is a very, very common play. So we are going to alto, step forward, and strike low, keeping the buckler, closing the high line to our inside. Uh, fourth op option is we're going to do a kind of feint, where we're going to thrust, switch feet, so doing this changing step and striking with a finette, for example, or it could be any attack really, but in this case to the high line. So we're here, we're going to reach out and then throw whatever makes sense. So we're going to test the waters a bit with this thrust without any feet. We're going to reach out, see what they do, and then come forward with one of those three tags, depending on what they do. Uh, next couple he says there's there's no feet involved. There's gonna be feet involved, but we need to be quite small compared to passing steps or triangle steps. So first up, we have a mezzo mandrito to the hand, assuming the hand is available, of course. If not, we'll hit the sword, followed by a reverso to the leg. So essentially, we are going to the hand and then going to the leg. So we want to put a little bit more movement to this. We can treat this as being a quick transition to chignale and then immediately go into Corona Strata as we strike to the leg. So do that again. Cut the hand of that, and then strike to the, so to the thigh with that number six. Uh, we could also just, if the hand is available, throw a falso, falso drito to the hand that's that's available. So, and we've done this a lot in, say, sword and dagger. Uh, but instead, we're gonna use our feet, and I would do the same thing here as well. Although he technically says no feet. It makes a lot of sense. 
and that opens us up, opens up the, a lot of possibilities like the pooping fox so, or the cut to the leg and the other things we know how to do. Next up, we are going to do something that's very similar to what we see in the Stepping in the Guards, where we're going to go from Kurunga Alta and do a Imbrocata and end up in Iron Gate and then come up and down with a Falso followed by a Margarito. So here, we're going to step to their side, come down to Puerto Ferro Larga. If they attack, we beat and we strike on the same line. So that shoulder to hip line, that mandrito. Finally, we have a false edge cut, bringing us to this long point position. The fork here is a little bit hazy, but it's there's an assumed step forward with the right foot. So essentially we are here, we're going to step in here, come into this long point, this middle position, and then we are going to turn our hand halfway, so do a mezza volta, as we step with our left foot and thrust to the face or chest. And he says this is particularly good against left-handed fencers. So we're here, coming up to here, assuming there's a right foot pass, and then we can do a half turn, which depending on where their sword ends up, this could be here, I may need to go here, but whichever way to go, I'm going to be turning my hand and striking with uh, through good on the eyes, so I've gained their weapon, and I'm striking two face or chest. Uh, he then inserts a little section on fighting left-handed fencers. I'm going to save that for later. Uh, and then he goes back to three more plays from Kodino Galta, how to deal with two uh, basic attacks, and then a somewhat complex uh, provocation sequence. So if we are dealing with a mandrito to the head, we're simply going to step back, strike the hand. Again, assuming that they are attacking with their hand past the buckler. And if not, we'll just get the sword and set ourselves up for the next thing to gain some tackle. So here, they strike, aim for the hand. If not, get the sword. We do the exact same thing for dealing with an attack to the hand, to the leg. But in this case, the sword, the sword hand is in fact available because they must be separating their hands a little bit. So for here, Kuro Alta, they go low, we strike to the hand as they come in. Finally, the last one is a sequence very, very similar to what we saw in the sort of cloak section. Uh, I believe it was Kuro as well, where we feint an imbrocata, turn it into a punta reversa, and then we are going to finish up with a, either a mandrito to the inside or a reverso. So this is kind of drawing from the punta reversa suite of actions. So Manchu describes this in a much bigger fashion and that we're starting with a thrust. This comes all the way back and then we're going to step around. Is it necessary? Not really. Uh, I would just start from that uh, imbrocata, so I'm just going to show that part. So for here, like I do before, this is going to this is going to be a feint, so I want to see what they're going to do, so I want to make sure I'm not stepping too deep. So to make this work, I want to step in a little bit. They do some sort of response. I'm going to change over to their outside. As they defend, I can go to head guard, strike to the head with a mandrito tondo, for example. You could tondo to the leg, or like we see in the mezza spada section, I could feint that mandrito, and as they go to cover, strike with a reverso, I don't know. So now 
full sequence look like if I'm doing the reversal. Faint this, step around, faint, strike the leg or strike the head. And so that concludes the sword and large, large buckler section of Machimino. Next up, we're going to look at the mezzo spada section, which is considerably longer than what we've seen in Dagokia. A full 17 actions and counters on both sides.